God is good. Oh, man, all the time. God is good. And things are happening. Are you ready for a, 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 an explosion? It's about to happen any moment. This is going to flip. This whole country is going to flip upside down very shortly. I'm telling you, it can happen any moment. Things are about to be released. And you know, the problem is, is people don't see it or understand it. They don't even realize what's going on. They're so caught up in their own little world. They have no idea what's going on. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It's just for me and you. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. In verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. Let's speak it. However, we speak wisdom from among those who are what? Mature, understanding. Yet, not the wisdom of this age. In other words, not the wisdom of this world. Nor of the rulers of this age. Who are coming to nothing. Well, that's happening soon. But we speak wisdom... Of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. In other words, he's been holding stuff. We got wisdom that has been holding so much revelation and knowledge that things are about to be released in an explosive way. He said, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. <laughs> but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. In other words, he's saying they haven't seen or they haven't heard because there's interference. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of whom is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are what? Spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Eye to see and ears to hear. In other words, he's saying there's something about this that's blocking my children from seeing all the way through and hearing all the way through. See, when you can't see all the way through and you can't hear all the way through, there's a word that he gives me in you. It's a plague. It's called short-sighted. And it is because it's blo what's blocking us is the demonic, worldly, and selfish influences preventing the Holy Spirit from bringing vision and hearing. And all of this comes from the council and in the throne of God. Without true godly sight and hearing, we can't discern. We can't what? Discern. Again, this is called short-sighted. 
Discernment is the ability to see things and hear things through. It's in cooperation and interpretation by the Holy Spirit to see the fruit of the end result. Shortcut. To see things that are fruit of the end result. When people are making decisions and doing all kinds of stuff, and if they do not see the end result of it, it's called short-sightedness. You may um, purchase something and not see in the end. You may go somewhere and not see in the end when God hasn't told you to go there. You may be agreeing with something and not see in the end of it. It's short-sightedness. And the, the reason for that is because self. Selfish interests are always superseding it. So people can't see things all the way through. Look at fear, what it does to people. Fear is nothing but a protector of self, pride, and so forth. Again, discernment is the ability to see and hear things all the way through. And this comes with the cooperation and interpretation by the Holy Spirit. The, the whole thing is, is when we see these things through, we see the end result or the fruit of the end result always. Always. If you don't see the fruit of the end result, then you're short-sighted. And it's been influenced by the enemy. Is everybody okay? Second Peter chapter 1. Oh, yes. I think we can call this a short-sighted spirit. It doesn't mean the spirit's short-sighted. <laughs> it means it causes us to become short-sighted. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. Oh, glory. Let's speak it. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? Knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life. Think about this. His divine power, his knowledge, his divine power has given us all things that pertain to this life. It's been given to us already. The problem is, is people are short-sighted and can't grasp hold of it. And godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these great and precious promises, you and I may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is the world through lust, but also for this very reason, Given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is what? Short-sighted. And even to what? blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins therefore brethren be even more diligent to make your call and election sure for if you do these things you will never what stumble so again why do people stumble because they're short-sighted for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into an everlasting kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ you know, one of the things that people don't realize is before Adam and Eve fell and became blind, they were short-sighted. Think about that. I mean, they were able to see, even though that they were able to see, one of the things that they lost was Eve lost the promises that God said. It was stolen from her. It was exchanged from her. 
And so she accepted what the serpent was saying. And because she was accepting what the serpent was saying, he was slowly bringing her short-sightedness. Until she finally gave in and accepted what he, what he said. And then after she acted on what she, he said, it brought blindness. You know, the word says a little leaven leavens a whole lump. It only takes a little bit to bring short-sightedness. One false agreement. Look at what happens when you go into the emergency room. You can go into the emergency room and something, you can tell the doctor there, look at man, I don't want none of your narcotics. Just give me ibuprofen. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to ignore you. They're going to give you dope. Why? Because the devil knows, according to the, uh, uh, the, the medical field, medication is everything. So they're going to try to give you something to short sight you. So people have no idea how many people fall back into the world because of pain medication or whatever it is. Look at lust does to a person. Lust short sights a person. These are things fear short sights a person. If the enemy can get you in a position where you are short sighted, he's eventually get you into a position where you become blind if you stay in that place. The key of knowledge, which is eternal knowledge, is vitally important for me and you because one of the things is, is we partake of this knowledge which is a part of the promises of God, it allows me and you to partake in the divine nature. This vast knowledge of God and his eternal ways of fellowship with his creation. <laughs> Listen, when you and I go into this place in his knowledge, when we believe and we accept and we execute, it allows the divine nature to be expressed in our being, busting through the carnal realities. Bust right through. Oh, glory. We need to bust out. And what are we the busting through? Is busting through the carnal realities of deception and blindness. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. So there's a place where you and I must be executing discernment with true sight and hearing. True sight and hearing. Only through the divine nature can these things be executed. It can't be executed through the carnal nature. It can't be executed to the will of self. It only can be executed through the divine nature. Remember, Jesus is always looking for Jesus. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Hallelujah. In verse 1, Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Remember, one of the greatest things that you've heard me share over and over and over is that a father sees his children to see the way he sees. That is a great joy to the father, that we see what he sees. Let nothing be done through selfish ambitions and conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Well, look at it. If you're short-sighted, the only one you're going to esteem is you. Let each of you not only look out 
for his own interest, but for what? The interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. God wants me and you to be like-minded with the mind of Christ. When you're like-minded with the mind of Christ, it is the divine nature of God. Why? So that you and I can see and so we can hear things through. So that we are not short-sighted by selfish ambitions, pride, lust, or conceit. But we are not only able to look out for ourselves, but others. 2 Corinthians 12. When there's short-sightedness involved, an individual's always making excuses. Excuses to not to do the right thing. See, because everybody knows what the right thing to do is. Second Corinthians 12. Is everybody there? Starting at verse 1. Let's speak it. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will what? I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body or not, I know, or whether out of the body, I don't know. God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And now such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Now, in this here, so such a one I will boast, yet for myself I will what? Not boast except for my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth, but I refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. What he sees or hears. Visions and revelations are gathered by the Holy Spirit. And they were released through the divine nature to be interpreted and discerned so that you and I can see things through and hear things through. Again, the divine nature of God is vital for me and you. That's how we should be living. It is the divine nature now, no longer the carnal nature. That's what makes you a new creation to the divine nature of God Almighty by His Spirit. Why? And we hold on to this divine nature because of the promises who He says you are and that you are eternal, not temporary, even though you're living in a temporary realm. So we see these visions and revelations are gathered by the Holy Spirit, released through the divine nature to be interpreted and discerned so that you, can, I, you and I can see and hear things through, so that we can see and hear the plan of God. And so his character can be expressed. And Proverbs 29. But what does the enemy try to do? He tries to bring us to a place we are what? Short-sighted. Proverbs 29. In verse 18. When an individual is short-sighted, uh, he that person cannot see things, hear things, and there's no revelation. They've been taken captive. Their mind is taken captive. It says in verse 18, where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the what? The law or the word. No revelation, no restraints of carnality. Only sin and short-sightedness and selfish ambitions. It's all about me. <laughs> That's what it's about. Short-sightedness. How I feel, how I think. What I want, how I want to do it. It's the I syndrome. It's always about self. 
making excuses, justifications, false justifications, which are nothing but lying excuses. No revelation, no restraints of carnality, but sin and short-sightedness. And 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Am I hearing things through? Getting confirmation. Not doing things because you feel like it, but doing things because it has been pre-directed by God. Everybody has a desire. Everyone. We all have desires. We live by desires. There are desires for businesses. There's desires for success. There's desires for materialism. There's desires for godly things. There's all kinds of desires. But not all of those desires are dedicated for you and God's will. But without discernment, you ain't get, you won't know. You'll think everything, oh, this is of God, and it's not of God. You know, I always go back to the point where God never interrupts himself. Ever. Never interrupts himself. And he's, and he's, uh, he's got our, the best interest for, listen, so many people grab hold of what is good instead of waiting for best. And then the enemy comes with fear. If you don't do this now, you'll never get it. Who cares? If it's God, it's coming. Oh, yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Is everybody there? I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus that you were enriched in everything in, by him in all utterance and all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ who will also affirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son in Jesus Christ. Hmm. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the what? Same thing. And that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, and in the same judgment. Now, this is powerful because that's what the Lord is trying to get to us. He's trying to get us to be like-minded. He's trying to get to the carnal, the, the carnal nature is busted, taken dominion over by the divine nature so that we all see things through and we all hear things through. So when God speaks, we all see it. When God speaks, we all hear it. And in that, we're able to continue to be about the Father's business and not our own business. So we come out of a place called survival and to a place called surrender. See, short-sighted individuals live a survival life. Worry, fear, lust, addiction. That's a terrible life to live. Lived it, hated it. Short-sighted all the time. So you and I have been enriched with this utterance of knowledge. And he's saying, don't come short or don't come short-sighted <laughs> of the gifts and the spiritual gifts and calling. He's saying, trying to tell us that we need to continue to maintain the divine nature with the full discernment to see and to hear things through. Without the divine nature, you can't discern. Matthew 15. Oh, you may discern the carnal things. Matthew 15. And 
in verse 8? Ooh. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Jesus said something very powerful. He said, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Why? Because there's really no connection. It's a ritual state of operation. They fool themselves and think that they fool others. But there really is no connect. None. There's not that love affair. Oh, I know Jesus. But you see, people say they love Jesus. But you can't be in love with him without connect. That connects. So when you worship him, you are worshiping him. You're not just singing words no more. Not, these words, these words are, they're just, that's not words no more. Now, when you first get saved, you got to sing the words. So you change, so you fall in love. You got to bust. Now, and, and there's, there's nothing that interferes with you now. See, now you are not short-sighted anymore because short-sighted individuals can't maintain focus. They drift. They can't even worship through because there's no connect. None. It's a heart connect. It's a love connect. It's spirit to spirit to where you just want to tell him how much you love him and you honor him and you're so grateful and you don't care what anybody else thinks because you know that he knows. It's a place of surrender. It's a place of love, purity. It's a place where you see him while you worship. <laughs> you know, the psalmist always said, I always put the Lord before me. People who can't put the Lord before them are short-sighted. Everything you and I do, Jesus should always be in front of you. Lord, what do you think? If he's not, you're short-sighted. Well, I love the Lord. You're short-sighted. No excuses. No justifications. If you're not making connection heart-to-heart, spirit-to-spirit, love, you find yourself weeping, you find yourself in joy, and you find yourself freedom, and you realize that you cannot live without his presence. And now you live for his presence. Oh, glory. Yes, they draw near to me, he says. They honor me with their mouth and their lips, but their heart is far from me because they are short-sighted. They're not connected. They're too much self-interest. In vain they worship me, teaching his doctrines the commandments of men. Oh, hallelujah. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear and what? understand not what goes into the mouth defiles a man but what comes out of the mouth this defiles the man then his disciples came and said to him do you know the pharisees were offended when they heard the saying oh snap and he answered and said to them every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted let them alone. They are what? Blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the what? Ditch. Oh, hallelujah. That's where people don't even, they don't even realize how unevenly yoked they are with other things. People, places, and things. Because they're short-sighted. They keep trying to make excuses and justify why they're connected with them. When the Lord says, come out from among them and be separate and become mine. Oh, hallelujah. Draw near with mouth and lips, but the heart is far because they're short-sighted, too much self-interest, can't make a connection, <laughs> easily offended and defiled by producing a critical spirit. Oh, they're critical of everyone else but themselves. 2 Corinthians 4. Those are short-sighted. 
and they lie. <laughs> we can see that in our government. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse one. Glory. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose what? Heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience where? In the sight of God. When people are short-sighted, they lose that God, the arena that God sees at all. And when they lose this arena that God sees it all, knows it all, they lose the reverence and fear of God. Verse 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. So a person that's actually short-sighted is actually on the path of perishing. Going to eventually come to blindness unless they're rescued, rooted out, or turned and many of them you can't rescue. It has to be a divine intervention by God Almighty. Oh, hallelujah. Even if our gospel is veiled, in other words, the truth, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Well, who's the God of this age? Satan. Hallelujah. Same thing that happened to Eve. It's happening to them. Too much self-interest. Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should what? Shine on them. But we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Christ Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Short-sighted individuals, they lose the reality that God sees all. The God of this world has captivated their minds in a false virtual reality, dictating the plan of self and its future without God. We see that happening all over. See, God's not included in their future. Does everybody understand what's happening? God's not included in their future. Well, what about God? There was a movie called What About Bob? You know, or something like that. <laughs> well, what about God? <laughs> we did not need to be a movie that says, what about God? You know, you don't hear this in, the, in our government. Well, somebody ought to say, well, what's God have to say about this? I haven't heard one Democrat or... Republican, say anything. I've designated Democratic Party Democratic. I'm sorry. They are so short-sighted that they're blinded. They're out there. Every one of them's headed into hell. I'm sorry, because they approve the things that the devil approves of. Plain and simple. We've got to pray for their rescue. Hallelujah. <laughs> But in this, people are taken captive in their minds. They live a false virtual reality, and, it's being dict and they're being dictated the plan of self and its future without God, keeping them blind, short-sighted, not able to comprehend the rescue or discern the danger that lies ahead because they're short-sighted. You know, that's why the word says we are in perilous times, man. It's a heavy-duty time. This is the most awesome time on the planet. You know, you live on a planet. There's a moon up there, stars all around. It's pretty heavy. One day we'll figure it all out, but today we ain't gonna. <laughs> James chapter 3. Oh, yes. James 3. Is everybody there? In verse 15, uh, 13. 
James 13. <clears throat> I mean, James 3.13, sorry. <laughs> Let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Well, short-sighted people do. This wisdom does not send from above, does not uh, descend from, it is what? Earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, what else is there? Confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Wow. Bitter, envy, self-seeking in the heart. This wisdom is demonic. <laughs> there is no true discernment with the wisdom of the world. Now, you may have discernment according to carnality, but not discernment because you will not see, if you are short-sighted, what is influencing the carnal arena. And we are to look through the temporary into the eternal to find out what is influencing the individuals, what is influencing the arena, what's influencing the atmosphere, what's influencing your thoughts, what's influencing your feelings, what's influencing you. And if you're not looking through those things, you are short-sighted. Oh, hallelujah. Short-sighted of true reality. Wisdom tells us what to do. Amen? Understanding tells us how to do it. So the wisdom from God is telling us what to do, and the, the understanding is telling us how to build the kingdom of God and not the kingdom of self. Listen, the highest level of discernment is the wisdom of God. That is the highest level of discernment. In Proverbs 4. Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 4, starting at verse 1. Is everybody ready? Amen. Start your engines. Hear, my children, to what? Instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and, and what? And what? And live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. She will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. What is the highest level of discernment? Wisdom. Does everybody get it? Godly wisdom. The highest level of discernment is the wisdom of God. So do you think you need God's wisdom? Amen. Wisdom is the principal thing, verse 7. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction and do not let go. Keep her 
for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked. Do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it and do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone what? Fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is like shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the br perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness and they do not know what makes them what? Stumble. Why? Because are they short-sighted? Yeah, they're stinking blind. Verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. And do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. And put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead. And your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. This is the direction of wisdom. It tells you what to do. Amen? Vitally important. Again, the highest level of discernment is the wisdom of God. And I'm going to close in Luke 4. Short-sighted. But short-sightedness always brings to blindness unless you come out of it. Luke chapter 4. Verse 18. We're going to confess this, decree it, because without the anointing, we can't do nothing. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of the sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he is coming. But he's coming first through the body of Christ. And you will begin to see more of that this year. He will begin to express himself more through the body of Christ. And you don't want to miss it. Amen? So praise God. Don't get caught up in short-sighted. See it through. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your mercies and grace to abound to us abundantly, Lord. And grant us, now we exchange our eyes for your eyes. <laughs> Bring healing to everyone's eyes here in the name of Jesus. Let the mind and the heart and the will and the desires of Christ be manifested in us with the full divine nature of God Almighty as we exchange our nature for the divine nature, promising to give you all the glory and honor and praise. Grant us vision, revelation, dreams and visions so that we may see things all the way through and whatever you have us do putting you before us, seeing your face. That's why you said, seek my face, so that we can put you in everywhere we are. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.